Start the show. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. To have a drink, a show where you learn along with uh, with us about the glorious drink <laughs> called beer. I'm Brittany Lee Walker. And I'm Justin Frazier. I'm Christopher Walker. And somebody's been drinking. <laughs> I wish. Hey, uh, <laughs> last night. I don't know who that who that person is, but oh yeah, yeah I guess I should have to say right. And I'm Casey Price, but I think somebody's <laughs> been drinking. So yeah, there's only one video coming through here. Uh, some more, some more technical difficulties. They are not audio related yet, anyways. Uh, all video related at the moment. Well, no, so I, no, until they, we figure we, out how big the lag is. <laughs> me and Casey died, and uh, this is our, this is our memorial show. In memoriam. Y'all, y'all can kiss my ass. You know, <laughs> if, if this show goes on long enough, we will have to do a memorial show for somebody. That's horrible. One of us will die. Just think about it. It's gonna be me. And we be the first one to die. Jesus. It's inevitable. Lofty goals. Lofty goals. Uh. <laughs> All, right. All right. So the last episode, uh, some people may have noticed, uh, was never posted anywhere because there were so many difficulties with getting that one going and up. Even after it got, we trimmed it up, got it edited, and we're getting ready to post it, and it took a big old dump. But I took I'm gonna go with, I mean, the Mac. I'm gonna, go with nin- I'm gonna go with ninjas came in and corrupted all of our files to make sure no yeah. one could could see it in all of its glory. <laughs> the last one, though, I'm not. Uh... Hey, Anorox. Um The last one, I'm not sad. It's gone. <laughs> that was a <laughs> it was just a drunken mess, <laughs> and uh, I'm convinced that MacBook just couldn't handle how terrible it was. So it just said no nope, and out. crashed and deleted the whole file and it was lost. So the only people who got to see it were those of you with us live. So that one's gone forever. So this will be the first one that gets posted barring any kind of uh, <laughs> crash. Yeah. Fucking ninjas. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Or gremlins. But, but yeah, yeah that's, you know, that's it's the fine. result of that. Hopefully this one doesn't go as badly, but the lag is still bothering me, and now we're having video problems. So just, you know, hold on. Maybe by, I don't know, sometime in March, <laughs> like, we'll have everything sorted and everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. We're all fine here. Everything's fine. How are you? <laughs> yeah, the computer we were running everything from before took a big old dump and is just a paperweight. So now we've got a series of tablets oh. and things strung together to try and make this work. Yeah. When this when this podcast gets to eighty eight miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. We'll be we genuinely surprised. Yeah. yeah, it's it's less like we're in a DeLorean that's been pimped out, and we're that uh, that train at the end of Back to the Future Three that's going to explode because oh yeah, right. we're throwing like nuclear logs into it. <laughs> Just go get it moving. <laughs> All right. Um... So Casey has been doing a bit of traveling and got to go out to Salt Lake, I believe. Yeah, I got to do a little preview before we go out for Nerdtacular. So uh, I went and scoped all the good places to eat. Um, got some good uh, pho restaurants, some ramen places. Um, went to Cup Bop. So, uh, but also scouted around to some of the, the different colleges in the area for work, quote unquote. And then um, was able to just basically spend a lot of time enjoying the beer so that was fun um you know you always 
hear about Utah's kind of backward beer laws, but I, I, I stumbled upon the 4% draft limit. So no matter what you get on draft, it has to be 4% or less. Usually everybody hits at 4% though. Jeez. Um, and that's ABV. Like where we would normally see Budweiser at, at 5% ABV, it, it'd be four there. Um, so that was interesting to start off with. Did you hit, uh, what kind of, did you find like a big stout that was just dropped down in ABV? I found a Dunkel that was 4% ABV. That was interesting. Um, uh, uh, it was supposed to be like real rich and everything. And then, you know, here it is sort of a watery. The, the thing, it doesn't actually wasn't watery. And that's what bothered me a little bit. Um, they would try that they actually watered it down. It, well, yeah, kind of. Um, I, don't get me wrong, because I like the idea that a four, the, all they served is 4% beer because I could drink however much I really wanted at a bar and not get drunk. And uh, as long as I was there, like, for an hour and a half, two hours, I could have, like, three or four beers and easily have that processed by the time I'm getting ready to leave. Right. But you were going to say? No, she just said right. She did it right. Oh, oh yeah. So uh, the, the biggest issue is that they try to do these fake big beers, and they just do them as small small versions. So I'm okay. Like, the, the Session IPAs, those were great. Um but whenever they did like these big beers, they would try to do them as full bodied versions of them. So it would be thick, but it would only be a 4% thick beer. Oh, yeah. And thick. that does not play well. So I had some good ones that were okay. Uh, and then I had some that were, I would not be going back that direction again. Um, <laughs> but I waited until I, I tried to do all the draft that I could, and then I waited until I got back to the airport on my way back and had a bottle because you can have basically whatever percent anybody else has in in bottle. And so I waited until I got back to the airport and had a really big imperial stout. It was like nine or ten percent, something around there, and um, you know, tasty. But uh, but yeah, it was delicious. All right. What places did you end up going to while you were out there? Um, I, I went to. to... I know about that. <laughs> I went to a, a little tiny um, brew pub place called. Oh, I should have written the. I should have written these down before I got on, but um, it was a. Uh, it was actually out in the airport and in the, um, out in the city. Both I got recommended from. I got my hair I did while I was there, <laughs> and uh, I got a recommendation from the barber that did my hair on where to go, because I mean. It's kind of obvious, but like in Salt Lake, it's 54% Mormon. Plus, if you go to Provo, it's even more so, and there are no beards. So whenever I walk around, they automatically know I'm not Mormon. They know I'm not, you know, from that area um, if I'm in Provo and, you know, have a beard. <laughs> so uh, I kind of stuck out a little bit. But uh, let me see. I'm looking back through my check-ins right now, and did, I did had you one or done? in it. <laughs> What's up? Did you get your hair did or done? Ha got my hair did. <laughs> I, got it. Uh, like that. Yeah. I went to Hopper's, Hopper's Grill and uh, Brew Pub, and that was actually pretty good. Um, but the one that I had, because they had the 4% that were in there, I had a uh, New Zealand-style lager and a Dunkel lager there. And then I went over to the uh, Squatters Brew Pub, which was on... Um, it was the first one that Zane Lambry went to on Have a Drink, or not Have a Drink, on his show in in the city. I but I went say, out. Uh, did did Zane Lamprey sudden take over our show, guys? Yeah, I would love it, please. Um, but uh, so I went there and had a hoppy pills. That was really good because it, you know it, it was watered down, but it was also you know full flavored and hop. So that was good. Um, and then they had the squatters, which is I don't know what the if anybody knows the actual how the partnership works or whatever, but Wasatch Brewery beers were being served almost exclusively at Squatters. Oh. And so I don't know what the, what the deal is there. Yeah. That, I mean, that is the local. So that's the one that's at, uh, that they have that, I, you know, I don't remember if it's exclusively now that you say that at uh, Snowbird when we went for an artacular. Um, but yeah, Wasatch is like the hotness there. Yeah. You, you see that more than like, especially in Salt Lake, I guess more than uh Uinta. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is the big so, national like, brand out of Salt Lake, which is yeah. very surprising. Yeah. Um, I was able to pick up one. Of, I didn't try it while I was there, but I did pick up, I guess, their probably most 
most famous beer, the Polygamy Porter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it I got a couple great. of those on nitro in the bottle to uh, bring back and see how those are. Um, and then one beer that you can't get anywhere on the East Coast, at least that I've found, is uh, someone, uh, one of these big name homebrewers that went big. And uh, um, he started a brewing group called uh, Heretic Brewing. And I was able to pick up a beer that I had heard a lot about and wanted to try for a long time, and that's Evil Cousin. Yeah. And it's a, you know, a really good IPA, um, actually a double IPA, but the flavor on it, even though it was a few months old, the flavor hadn't aged any. It was just a really nice, bright IPA still after, you know, six months or whatever it was. If Evil Twins have, like, the whole Van Dyke thing going... What do evil cousins have to distinguish them? <laughs> so the reason that beer is named Evil Cousin is because it was um, it was a combination between uh, okay, so the cousin to hops would be marijuana, and oh. so this is a really dank beer with yeah. a lot of got it. Yeah, so yeah. that evil cousin. Um, Evil cousin is coming out being that 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 way. So they kind of play on words that I hate. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Anna so was curious the mo dank. She, uh, when you say full flavored, uh, did it taste like sweeter malt flavor compared to a normal like six percent ish in beers? So no, it actually. So when we're talking about, I'm assuming you're talking about the beers that were, um, the ones that were the the four percent. So. No, it doesn't have a sweet... It's like a thicker... Like you would have added cornstarch to it to kind of thicken it up. That sort of of flavor. Um, it, it has a full mouthfeel, uh, but the full flavor, you don't get the... the. I mean, it tastes watered down with cornstarch added to give you that feeling of a, a thicker beer. Oh. That sounds awful. That, that sounds worse than <laughs> just having it kind of watered down. Yeah. Exactly. And that's that was what it... Yeah, it was thick and liquid. Um which is was not fun. Then the the I think the worst part of the entire trip was the 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 trip back whenever I got on the plane and and the lady who was having a few issues before she even got there but she got in, got on the plane and sat down I was on the window seat and she was in the middle. And um so when you look at uh, the way we were kind of squished together it was one of those those really tiny planes. So I, she got on and I started to smell this grapefruit flavor. And I thought, does she have maybe a grapefruit perfume on or something? And then the more and more she sat there, I realized, no, it, it smelled like a really dank, piney, resinous, grapefruity IPA, but it was her body odor. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and when she took off her vest, I was like, oh, no, I've got another three hours on this plane, and I've got to smell grapefruit lady the entire way. Mm. I was not... Wait. Was she? Did sorry. I, I, when you said grapefruit lady, I just immediately <laughs> went to. No, 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 no. Yeah, uh, not that grapefruit not, lady. Not that kind of. Uh, <laughs> Jeez. I was wondering because looking in our nose, it just says grapefruit lady, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. So, but she. I mean, it smelled exactly like a grapefruity, citrusy hop, and I was like, mm, this is going to be fun. Yeah. Uh, because it, it's that it's that strange, like, ooh, I would like to have a grapefruit IPA. And then it goes back to, but that is that lady's BO. And it kind of grosses you out. I may not be able to have a grapefruit IPA again. You're like, mm, I could go for a grapefruit sculpin right now. And you go, wait, no, no. Uh, uh. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it was it was a fun trip. Got to try a lot of stuff. Got to kind of scope out where we're going to go and, and be able to hit up for uh, stuff on the way back uh, in the summer. So, hopefully, we've got a few places to hit. Awesome. Well, before we get into what the rest of us were up to, uh, let's go ahead and crack open the first one of these beers from the Schlafly Smash Pack. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, like, crack the top, not this like up. break open the top of the bottle, right? Just, just, just open it. Uh, <laughs> what, what were we doing first? Sorry. I guess should we should we talk a little bit about the, the what the Smash Pack is, Chris? Yeah, yeah. So uh, the uh, where did you go? So. We apparently, <laughs> I don't know if we officially knew this beforehand either, like the two of us. I don't know about you guys, but uh, Schlafly is a brand of the St. Louis Brewery. So we were trying to like, mm. we were like, oh, okay, maybe it's like Boston Beer Company with Sam Adams. Yeah. That uh -huh. kind of thing. 
Yeah, so who knew? Um, <laughs> but uh, so they're sold under the Schlafly brand, um, and they're distributed in uh, Missouri, Kansas, Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kentucky, Tennessee, northwestern Mississippi, Arkansas, northern Virginia, D.C., New York, and New Jersey. That's like super specific. That's like a weird... It's Midwest starting to try like... and stretch into the Northeast. Mm. So uh, we, it's not as widely distributed as we, we were hoping it would be, but um, we, we do have a few more nationally distributed kind of things later on um, in the next episodes. Um, so, and then it was done, it was started by uh, a lawyer and nephew of the late political activist Phyllis, Sh- Phyllis, yeah, Phyllis Schlafly. These names, man. Uh, and look, let's just all agree that Schlafly is the hardest name to say when you're drinking. Right? Yeah. Like, if you want it's to try and order one by name at the bar, no, forget it. You're just tripping over all your words. Or sorry, it was named after her. Anyway, so the pack itself, um, and we, we have a, we're going to share a link to it We're gonna, after we post the show notes, but, um, it's uh, the hop trial pack, basically, and it, it features single malt and single hop, which is what SMASH stands for in this. And um, it's bringing out the individual qualities of each ingredient, making the profile of the featured hop um, the main focus of each beer. So um, this is the first installment that they've done, I guess, and uh, they're hoping to have more come out in the future. Um, that they want to exp- uh, explore some experimental hops, and um, yeah, the, I don't know that we have a timeline though for that. Yeah, the, in their in their brew pub, they do like one experimental a month, and but it's on tap. And so whenever we get these smash packs out, that's uh, that's really cool. Mm. Yeah, the and as Anachronox says in the chat, these these packs, more breweries really should do them. It literally is a on every beer that you're going to get here today there's there's a single two row malted barley there's no additional flavor malts or anything in there it's just one single malt uh two row barley uh probably american two row Uh, it's a golden ale comes in at six and a half percent abv uh six srm so very light and then in color and then ibus you're looking at 45 ibus and the hop that is bittering it is the same hop that is adding the flavor Hmm. now we'll say that whenever we um, whenever we do drink these and try these, that each of these beers will have been brewed somewhere around six months ago, six to eight months ago. I mean, it's a little old of a pack. Um, I didn't know that when we were picking it up, but right. because I hadn't hadn't seen it recently until you know we saw it maybe a few weeks ago before. But uh, you know, keep that in mind. But the fact that it doesn't have any um, any of the what what are we called the caramel malts actually yeah, helps yeah. in this one. Okay. Uh, and then which one are we starting off with here? The Hollow Tower Blanc. Okay. Hollow Tower. So Hollow Tower, uh, originally from Germany, the, the original Hollow Tower uh, hop, originally from Germany. Um, this one is a daughter of the Cascade hop. So whenever you breed hops, they, you know, each hop vine is exactly the same genetic material as every other hop vine out there of that same name. So this one, whenever you breed it, um, they bred a cascade with something else, and you got this hop that came from it. Um, released in 2012, uh, because American craft beers kind of wanted a hop that was like this. I, I'm sorry, I'm just picturing of breeding hops in the same way that you, know, like you breed <laughs> horses or dogs. And <laughs> see, my mind was going to Jurassic Park. <laughs> He did it. Oh really God. crazy son of a bitch. He did it. Da, 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 da. Um, in hop fields, it's all, I, I guess, it, it kind of does go back to Jurassic Park because it wasn't Jurassic Park like all females? There were no yeah. no males at all, supposedly, yeah. in the park. And then uh, they. Yeah, but uh, life uh, finds a way. <laughs> right. So in hop fields, there are all female varieties. There are no male varieties in hop fields intentionally so that they don't crossbreed and, and cause so genetic mutations. They um, have to keep they have to keep things pure for this German hop. <laughs> uh, yes. Germany we can't likes get away to from keep things pure. <laughs> with their hops. You, you knew German purity was going to come into this. Yeah. No, no, stop. just stop. <laughs> um, stop. So I have to say, the color is very pretty. It's like this, like, 
Very nice gold. Um, yeah. A, a lot of hazy. head retention. Yeah, it is kind of hazy. Um, I... Just the smell, I'm getting... Initially, I got a bit of a soapy smell, but then, like, swirling it around a bit, I got, like, kind of pineapple and tangerine. Mm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So this hop is um, mostly made for aroma, a little bit of that bittering, though, because you've got to have um, the ability to bitter with, with these dual-purpose hops. Um, it has a very tropical profile, uh, common in IPAs, Belgian L's, wheat beers, and um, actually in prep fermentations, you'll see a very good uh, usage of this type of uh, style of hop. Uh, but it will feature pineapple, gooseberry, white grape, uh, fresh lemongrass, passion fruit. Mm. Yeah, now that you say that, like taking a drink, I get pineapple and lemongrass. Definitely. Like lemongrass is what's standing yeah. out for me. I like I like it. It's, I like it a lot. So this is supposedly that floral, um, the floral side of the the hop, and so we're the Holler Tau Blanc is more floral than anything else. So that's what this one's trying to feature. Yeah, and I think it does a really good job of that because like that's <clears throat> that's one of the the more I guess we'll say floral beers I've had in a while. That's it. Yeah. Last night was all stouts all the time for me. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's it, get into that now. So. Yeah, since we've introduced this beer, what we were doing last night and this weekend, uh, Justin made it up because uh, I don't think many people in chat, there are some, uh, are in the Cincinnati area. And we're not going to go crazy local on this. We were just talking. Yeah. We, so we happened to go to a local event, which was a grand reopening of a brewery because they moved to a bigger location. And, bigger uh, location. A- they, they had the technology. They built it better, stronger. Faster than it was before. And they had the budget. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It was like multi-million dollar project. But um, so we went to this local ev- brewery event, but we got, we did get to try some. Uh, I would say a couple of them are like semi-local, but they are more distributed throughout the Midwest and even farther off to some to some places. Because um, one of them is uh, Jackie O's and one's like the Three Floyds. Okay. Well, the Three Floyds was after we got back here. I'd pick that up. Oh, okay. Um, Either way, that it reflects. It's fine. <laughs> what you get in that is there were a couple that are, I think, nationally. Dist- Sun King, are they making national distribution yet? Mm-hmm. Casey, do you know? Mm-hmm. I do not know. I do not know. I'll look that up while you're all talking, though. I do know Sun King. They've got some uh, really highly rated beers right now that are really talked about in the community. Uh, grabbed uh, their Osiris Pale Ale, mainly because I could sneak in there and grab that quicker then I could get in line for the actual brewery's beers because it got to a point where you're waiting 45 minutes for anything to drink. Yeah, it was. Yeah. They got, there was so many people there. By the, by the time I got there, because I had to work the first half of the day uh, and had to drive to Cincinnati, but when I got up there, uh, it was a little insane. Yeah. So we, we got him up there and was like, okay, we've been here all day. What's going on right now? You want to get every beer you want to drink in one swoop because you'll never make it back up to yeah, the bar. Bob comes back with like five cups, one of which is already in his mouth. <laughs> it was only four. I had three in my hands and I had I had the small uh, Axis Mundi uh, stout with cayenne pepper. Coffee and cayenne. Just da- yeah. Coffee and cayenne dangling from my mouth. He's like, yeah, no. You so, you're gonna splash. You splash inside. <laughs> currently, uh, distribution is Indiana only for oh. bars, restaurants, and venues. Um, I guess they could take it out for special events. They can get a special permit or a, a get licensure to go out for special events, but That's only weird. inside Indiana currently. Oh. That's weird. Well, I uh, got a hold of that one, and then uh, Jackie O's Spirit Beast was on tap, and I, that one I is can't a can't blending... hear Jackie O without. Thinking of the Kennedy assassination, <laughs> I'm just picturing like the label is like her in the pink thing with a pill hat, and it gets really dark like three seconds later. Which is not at all what what the labeling is. It turns out. Yeah, but uh, Spirit Beast is a blending of five of their other uh, Imperial Stouts. From Jack- cool. They do a lot yeah. of Imperial Stouts, and they blended five of them into one thing and then they blended that with a belgian quad yeah and it was delicious i have to say it was very intense though like it was it was pretty strong uh that was good wow. though it was it was but yeah so, it, it's one, definitely one of the small pours that they give you is like a little yeah. tiny cup yeah so i keep having to reference back to my untapped 
That's which we'll talk about in a minute. We'll get back to that. It's a great, great tool yeah. for when you can't remember what you were drinking. Well, and also while we were there, I tried. Um, now, the, the the particular name is a local, um, specifically to that brewery that we were at, but uh, so they called it a flulsh, which is just the worst way <laughs> to, to think. Play of off of because saying. it was a kolsch. Yeah, it was a floral kolsch. So they called it a flulsh. Yeah, but I, see, thought, I thought they, I thought they were going for it's a fake kolsch. It, yeah, it could have gone either way, but uh, it's. I thought the take on the style was interesting because it, it was a Kolsch style, but it had um, lime, chili, and what was it? Ginger. ginger. Limes, chilies, and gingers in it, or ginger in it, and it was so good. It was like really, really refreshing. Hmm. It was. It was a nice a sip of that. Was a nice break in between the four different styles I was <laughs> yeah. slamming. Yeah, you had you got a bunch of dark things, and I had tried to keep. My beers. We were we were there for Most twelve hours. Yeah, like all because day. Because I was, I thought there would be a giant line, so we got there early. I was like, oh, there's always a bottle share while you're waiting to get in, you know, get into things like this. I brought a bunch of beers with me, and then we get there. What doors are supposed to be at eleven, and we pull up at seven thirty, and I'm like, well, there's no one here. All right, we're the first. So I was like, we'll just chill in the car. We roll down the windows. We sit there, listen to music, and talk. And after about a half an hour, I'm like, well. I've got all these beers in here. No one else is here yet, so I think it's time to start drinking. <sighs> yeah, no. this is this is more or less what I, I thought when I heard like, yeah, no, we've been here all day, and I'm at yeah. They they you started drinking before I woke up. Yeah. So yeah, about eight a.m. It was we one were. of those day drinking things. So. So yeah. we ended up drinking all the <laughs> beers we brought with us, and just no one else, no one's in line. Yet. I was like, all right, well, when it gets to an hour till doors, we'll just go hop up in line. And that's kind of what happened. And then right after we get up there, everyone else shows up. I don't know if everyone was just like sitting off to the side waiting for something to happen. They're like, well, I'm You're waiting for that first brave, brave hero to create the line. <laughs> well, we sucked it up and we were those heroes. But we only got there that early because we've been to many of these events where we don't get a seat. And if you're going to be there, because we yeah. knew you were going to be a while getting up, you want a seat. And I was yeah. like, I'm not standing for the next eight hours. Yeah. So we we did get a seat, so we could have pizza and all this different stuff. But we ended up having to fight people pretty much all day to keep them out of our seats. Yeah, um, it it got nuts. But and then uh, so when we got back, then and and Bob was actually there to try that part. But it was the Three Floyds collaboration with Fatheads Brewery, which was interesting just because of that, really. <laughs> so. Uh, but it was a good beer. It was really good. What, what was the style again? Um, crap. <laughs> <laughs> crap. Uh, we checked in. Just IPA is what they have it down as. Uh, that doesn't sound like a really good. Confidentiality and disclosure. I was like, crap does not sound like a good style. <laughs> no. <laughs> the beer was confidentiality and disclosure, and it was. I thought it was really good. It's one of those hazy IPAs. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was a wheat based one. Yeah. But it was like real citrusy and just. A great mouth feel on it. Really pleasant to drink. It it was really a true collaboration between those two breweries. It brought the best of both of those breweries in, and it is extremely popular right now. Like there, it wasn't standout at all. There was nothing about it that was screamed exclusively. You're getting this taste from this only this beer, but it was still really good. Yeah, it um, I I really liked it. I I just. The bottle's great too. I think I want to keep that label, but it, it was just an interesting collaboration, a choice between people. Um, all right, I'm I'm really liking this beer. The more we drink it, um, me we, too. Uh, but I just keep looking at it like you're going to be gone soon, and I'm afraid how all the rest of them are going to taste. Yeah, yeah. This so is yeah, the only thing the only thing different between these four beers is just the hop. Everything right. remains the same, which lets you taste just the hop, which That's is great. A, I think it's such an interesting approach. To these things. I wish more people would do this. More breweries. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, so do you want to know the reason that it was called Flush? Oh, okay. I mean, I've got some theories, but <laughs> go ahead and tell me the actual reason. Apparently, um, a chef from the Cincinnati area, uh, Maribel's, mm -hmm. Mike Floria, uh, was, I'm guessing that he was a collaboration to bring together some of this beer and his high school nickname was Flosh, which turns sure out that how sounds he, like Kolsch. Not sure how he gets that nickname. So they just slapped Umlaus uh, on it and we're like, there we go. 
That's so now funny he, too because uh, that that place was there because um, they had like a series of food trucks and Mary Bell's was there. Yep. So uh, the chef from there, I think, is the collaborator on this, and uh, now he just goes by Flo. <laughs> All right, then. just flush. So there you go. But yeah, that event was uh, a little a little crazy. Yeah. I mean, it was it got to the point to where you just gave up. Like we took of our remaining beer tickets and just bought every used them all and bought as many beers as I could and took them back because I was like, I'm not going back up there. Forget it. <laughs> oh, wow. So you could, you could take them to go. Oh no, no, we, we just took them back to the, to, to the, to the table table we were sitting at. Okay. Okay. Woo. Well, I, I was like, like missing out on that one. If you could take it to go. Well, they had big signs. I was like, no beer beyond this point, but people didn't care. Yeah, because they had yeah. like food trucks where technically you weren't allowed to have your beer at. Mm, that stinks. Yeah. All right, you ready for the next beer? Let's, ready let's to crack it open right now. One. Just whenever you go from that beer to this beer, I've already cracked it. Th this is what I'm afraid of. Ah. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, just whenever you, you smell it, just think it's the only thing that's changed is the hop, and, and that just kind of blows my mind that the only yeah, thing that's is, changed is one this hop. This is the Brambling Cross. Yep. Okay, Brambling Cross is the next one? Yeah. Yeah, so just a little background on Brambling Cross and what uh, kind of what that hop comes from. Um, so you're looking at a UK derived hop. Now this was originally this isn't a new hop. It's not a new variety or anything like that. It's it was originally derived in 1927 at uh, Y College, W Y E College in England. So. This is actually a really old hop, but what we're seeing more and more of is these old hops will be discovered or rediscovered by some small microbrewery, and you know the hipsters really latch onto it. Um, I'm just picturing when you say like they're getting rediscovered, I'm just like picturing like they're the, the doing an archaeological dig for hops. This looks harder. Um, Stick your nose in there. Oh my god, that is huge difference. <laughs> yeah, the head the head on this is nuts. Well, I so mine, really mine had a big head, but it dissipated quickly. I don't know if that had a different, you know, hop. It, it could be the hop oil content. You know, the oils could have a tendency to reduce the amount of, of head retention. But uh, I don't know. Uh, but this this was rig originally a hop that was developed because of its resistance to verticillium wilt. So it's, it's resistance to a an actual... Uh, something that would would come around and wipe out hop crops. It had a resistance to it, and I think this is the same. Um, this may be the same thing that came came in and wiped out grapevines as well. Mm. Uh, but despite its growing demand, it's still primarily just available in the UK. It's in, in small batches. It's a lower yield crop, so it's not like a big hop that's used for mass production beers. It's a cross originally from Golding, which is a Kent, originally grown in Kent, um, Kent Golding hop, and a Met Manitoban, which is a Canadian hop. So a cross between those two. So that I'm not is... getting any citrus from the smell at all. So this one is spicy. And so yeah. with a spicy hop, you're going to get like blackcurrant, loganberry, maybe a little bit of lemon. Um, but you'll get like plum. And that black currant will really come through. Maybe some hay aromas. I was going to say black currant may be the thing that I'm, I'm tasting yeah. most out of it. Isn't that weird? What's the mouth feel is even completely different from the last yeah. one. Yeah. Like this one is really cloying. It's sticking to the roof of my mouth. Mm hmm. And the smell and is a similar like, thing with that. Like a so, resin smell. So that is, I mean, that is that indistinct spice that you, you can, in this beer, it's like, I don't know what that spice is. But it kind of reminds me of allspice or clove and cinnamon and all those things kind of put together. That's so interesting from such a lightly colored beer to me. Like that's Can't. not something you expect. I can never hear clove without immediately going to cigarette in my brain. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's just always the first first stop I make. Okay, so I think earlier we were talking... Uh, we forgot to bring it up last episode that I guess really just doesn't exist now, so it doesn't matter. Um, untapped, if a lot of you are into that. I thought you wanted to talk about the new beers. Okay. Wait a second. Okay. Uh, but on yeah. Untapped, you can uh, kind of follow us and keep track of a lot of the beers you're drinking. And it, like we were just using, it's a great way to call back when you forget 
after you've had a few what you actually drink. Except and, I'm really bad to forget to check into things. Yeah, you, you do have you do kind of have to be almost obsessive about it <laughs> to make sure that you not only check in, but you're checking into the correct one. And if you want to tag a location to it, um, which I think you still have to have like a Foursquare account to do the location thing. Um, I think did they lock down adding? Yeah, you can add a new location through Foursquare, and so yeah. Okay. Uh, but you then, can you can check in with Untapped without a Foursquare account, though. Right, right. But if you want to remember like where you drank something at, like to remember, you know, if it's locked yeah, down just, to a specific think, location, for that matter. I think just to add, um, just to add a location to add a new location. Now you can check into old locations through Untapped without having the Foursquare. Okay. Um, that's my understanding. Cool. Um, yeah, I, I'm I'm a huge fan. Um, and, it, you know, we try on the overlay to have our untapped profiles on there. Um, we do talk about... Uh, so untapped does badges. Again, kind of like Foursquare we used to do. Where... I would say we don't need no stinking badges, but... No, we're dick. No, we need all the badges. <laughs> that's why I had Casey uh, bring me some bottles of uh, Vienna Lager. Because there were two badges. <laughs> One Look, for each I gotta drink. I gotta drink cheat. them all. That's all I'm saying. You don't yeah. cheat. I mean, it's worthy to have all these beers. You do gotta drink them all. Um, <laughs> but it, yeah, the badges are like these nothing. They're just digital little like fun things that come up like if you meet yeah. a criteria. So, you know, you can get a badge for let's say a beer week in a certain city, or <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or, not Cincinnati. Yeah, but not Cincinnati. <laughs> Um, or you can uh, get a badge for drinking like a certain number of a particular style or from a particular region. Um, Heavyweights is one of my more more right. commonly achieved badges. Yeah. Or Land of the Free, yeah. which we maxed out. Or there's also a lot of the badges for like. Oh, you maxed for, it out. Yeah. Level 50. Wow. Yeah. Uh, nice. Yeah, a lot of the badges like that that are. What does that one involve? That, it involves more region based stuff will only take you up to a certain level. And I think 50 is the max for most of them. So something yeah. to keep in mind, like the more ongoing badges like that. Um, but yeah, we, we use untapped a lot. Uh, so the, the app is available um, not only online, like you can actually use it on the website if you want to, but uh, iOS, Android, and I think they still have the windows phone version. Um, There's still windows phones. I know someone out there is still using <laughs> Hey, I found yeah. my old one the other day and booted it up, and I was very surprised, and I still love how clean it is. Yeah. I, oh. I do like the, the modern Windows aesthetic, but um, but yeah, it they do, as far as I know, that one does still exist for there. Um, but you can, it, and you don't have to do, do the picture thing, but I think sometimes when you get to take a picture of, of the beer and everything, like to me remember the color um, or the label or, you know, some, something that helps you look for it in the future. Yeah. Um, I think it's really good. And then the other thing is like, we kind of developed our weird little rating system for it. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone has their own way that they rate things on Untapped. So yeah, it's, uh, I know <laughs> people who don't, they don't give a rating at all. They just say what they think of the beer, which like their description, which doesn't include a, I liked it or I didn't like it. They just kind of, they take a picture and they're like, I had this beer and they say, Oh, it had this quality or these notes to it. This kind of flavor. And they don't say positive or negative about it. Uh, there's some people, like the the num the way you rate things with the numbers can get just really skewed. Mine is, uh, I'm gonna rate it at three or above if I would go out of my way to have it again. Mm -hmm. If it's three or below, yeah. I do not want to ever drink that again. Yeah, four is a four is a really good beer. Four uh, four is probably like I will buy a six pack of this. Uh. So, and that, uh, and Acrodox in the chat kind of has this, this thing that he says that, that kind of makes the average rates pretty worthless. And, um, yeah, ratings, depending on, no, there's no set, like, how do you rate it? So the way yeah. I, I do individually on my account is my average beer is a three. Anything that's above average, but not actually extraordinary is three to four. Anything below average or that has significant flaws that aren't just age related, um, can go below three. And then those beers that I would would really drop everything to go and try to find are the four to five range. ABS, so five, 
Genius and El Coco are like my fives. <laughs> yeah. yeah, those are fives, and that's that's pretty much all that gets into that range. Well, that makes sense um, too because you have a, a judging kind of background for beers, where and then you know rating uh, at the end of the day is all subjective anyway. You know, it but is. you got to base it on something that makes sense to you, and it's still I think it still says something about the quality of the beer and the the taste of the beer if you're saying. I'm rating it this because I'm definitely going to get this again. Or I yeah. not only am I rating it this because I want it again, but I'm going to make an effort to get a lot of it again. <laughs> you know, I, I think, yeah, and I good think that, yeah, that, that, that really goes to the difference between rating beer in a competition versus rating beer just for my personal enjoyment. Right. Because in a competition, I'll say, does it fit the guidelines? Does it go here? Whenever I'm rating on untapped, it's, do I really like this beer? Would I? Uh, it may not fit the guideline, but hey, it's a good beer, and so right. I'll go up on that end. It's all very personal. Um, um, one of the drawbacks that I do have, and and you know, this is for everybody, is that I'm I'm a big uh, proponent of independence whenever it comes to ratings, and so in ratings throughout the system, and nobody can pay for a bigger rating or anything like that that I know of. Um, but the badge system. You can, there's a, it's a marketing thing for some companies to go and say, hey, we want a badge, let me pay untapped, and that way you get a badge for it. So right. um, you see this a lot of times with like the Guinness badges, <laughs> drink three blondes. And yeah. um, so I don't, I don't like that. And so I don't go after those badges, but you don't have to. That's the thing. Like my badges are mostly the ones that are just untapped only badges that count how many beers you've had. And, have you had a beer from this country or those types of things? But those the badges that are even you know specific that a company has paid to have up can lead you chasing badges to try beers you normally wouldn't go out of your way to find. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Be, like it, it'll be like, I, oh, this beer is like, well, I've never really thought about it, but I kind of want the badge, so I can go see if I can find a bottle somewhere. Yeah, I, I think it, it works both ways. I'm not a fan of it, but at the same time, if you if you are someone, you don't have to rate beers as, as Anachronox points out. He doesn't actually use it for rating, just the keeping track of stuff. Um, but so if you're a person who doesn't rate the beers, it's still a good way to discover new stuff. Even if it's being yeah. paid for, if you find out that you like it, I guess it's kind of a benefit. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's, why, that's not, not that much different than a commercial. Right. Exactly. Yeah, and I'm not huge anti. I'm not huge anti untapped because of it, because they've got to monetize it some way so that we don't have to pay for it. Exactly. And so, what better way than let Anheuser Busch do it, and then I can choose whether I want to, to do that. Yeah, and, um, and to be fair, I tried a beer from AB InBev, which was oh, what was the company? <laughs> it was the, the the people who do the toasted lager. Uh, oh they yeah, had a, yeah. They had it at Oktoberfest. Yeah, or... yeah, Blue Point. And I actually really oh, liked the yeah. lager. It was all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and they had a badge. I I tried it. I liked the beer. So. Speaking One thing that I do want to point out, though, is whenever I start to rate beers, and this goes back to something that Anachronox said there, whenever I start to rate beers, I want to make sure that I'm giving them a good shake and a good fair rating. Mm -hmm. So after I have had maybe three or four beers, I don't rate anymore for that night until I can get them, get my palate back to a place that it needs to be and say, okay, this is a real, I can, I can tell myself this is for real what I really think about this beer, not... Not with the rose tinted glasses the entire night. Yeah, after four not or five with, beers, everything's not with the beer getting, taste buds. Everything's yeah. getting yeah. a four up. You're just like, this is amazing. <laughs> well, yeah. That's, that's so whenever I go to a beer tasting, I'm like, no. After after probably four or five, no, I probably go in about ten pours on a like two to four ounce pours somewhere in there, about ten pours before I quit. Yeah, and I just I, check in and say, yeah, I've had it. So that's the other thing to keep in mind for anyone using Untap but isn't aware of that. You can go back and edit your check ins. So you can add pictures later. You can change change your rating later. So it's just a good thing to to know in case you want to do something like that. You want to check into the beer to make sure you don't forget something, or if you are trying to get a timed kind of badge, because some of them you know have like a two week window, for example. But um, it's good to know if you want to hold off on the rating until you're in a better palate state and a better state of mind, perhaps. <laughs> so <laughs> just keep that there. <laughs> All right, I'm going to yeah. go ahead and say we need to jump, because of time, uh, into our next beer, which I believe is the Enigma. Yep, uh, yep, I already cracked my own. This one down. Choke, 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 choke. It's not very often we get, like, a, a nice golden ale through the whole way, so I have the opportunity to actually enjoy all the beers. <laughs> yeah, this one, this is actually a lot clearer 
I can tell from the first pour than the other ones. The other ones were a lot hazier. <clears throat> How on earth did that make you want sardines? Saltines and sardines. I don't know. They sound very similar, and I just wanted <laughs> something really salty to go with these. <laughs> okay. Quick, to the pizza. God, we had so much pizza this weekend. <laughs> it was kind of ridiculous. Oh um, all right, so tell us about this one, Casey. You know what I made? For, you know what I made for myself to eat once I got home? Pizza. Pizza. Oh my god. <laughs> pizza. Pizza. <laughs> um, last night I was drinking. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Nope. Nope. Um, so last night, you know, I was on still on west coast time just about it and uh i stayed up till about three o'clock in the morning and drinking i went from what did i start with i started with like some standard beers um went to a uh, the the evil cousin then from there went to i don't know oh i went to bourbon so i was like going to finish the night off with some bourbon but i was still playing games at the end of the night so i picked up two beers and at the end of the night, one of them was uh, next week, week after next, we'll make two years from the date it was canned. Um, and it was an IPA. So oh. I was not about to rate that beer because if I rated it, it would be like a one. But I still be, that's, that's unfair to that IPA. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, if it's an old beer, if it's something along those lines, I'd try not to, to rate it like yeah. that. Okay. Can we talk about this beer? We just cracked open this Enigma. I really like this smell. Mm. <laughs> I so don't whenever... like the smell, but I like the taste. Is that strange? No, not I mean, necessarily. Different things. I just mean like the, the, there's something about, and it may just be that my sinuses are a little, a little wonky still. But so this is uh, Enigma. It's supposed to show off and showcase the fruitiness of hops. Now this is from Australia, so uh, south of the equator. Hop, uh, um, descendant of the Swiss Tetanang hop. Yeah, Tetanang, I guess, would be the, the yeah, proper sure. way. It's the Tet Offensive. We're in Tetanang. Tetanang. Um, but not, it, not only does it grow, and they actually say in here, not only does she grow, because I guess she, it is a female hop. Um, like a North American hop, she throws up a range of flavors that are far removed from her heritage. So it doesn't taste like that Tetanang. Um, I need, I need to say that again, like Paul Hogan. <laughs> I know the name. Oh, oh yeah, I can't do that. Uh, I would, I would offend <laughs> some, I'm sure. Uh, again, you, you, know, you want to go in and go like, uh, let's see, she throws up a. No, no I she, can't do it. <laughs> she throws up a range of flit. No, no, no that's not. Oh, that's all. Yeah, that went, went wrong. See? You were just Magni Bronzebeard for a minute. <laughs> uh, come in oh, and have a drink. <laughs> So <laughs> it's a dual purpose hop, uh, mid teen alpha acid. So I think it was like 13 to 15 average alpha acid. Can, can um, you really say that Scotsmen and Australians are that different? I mean, technically, they're really from the same country with the accent. <laughs> okay, um, sorry. Carry on. Uh, soft, this one has a soft bitterness. So one of the things that I really want us to get into on an episode is it doesn't matter what the IBU level is. It matters what the hop bitterness is. And so I want to get into an episode where we have three hops that are uh, different bitterness levels, but all the same IBUs, and let us taste that and see what the difference is. Because um, you can have a 45 IBUs that tastes really harsh bitter, mm. and then you can have 45 IBUs that tastes really soft bitter, which is supposedly what this hop is. Mm. Um, you can dry hop with it. Which is at it late, like after the hop is or after the, the wort has been cooled, or um, at it late in the brew process. So maybe at whirlpool to maximize the flavor or aroma potential. Every hop you can do that with. This one just it, it kind of stands out a little bit better. I hear a whirlpool, and I'm picturing like a, a jacuzzi for for hops. Uh, yes. So you're going to see. It smells yeah. wonderful. Uh, There's just a hop just lying back, <laughs> just relaxing with like a, a mimosa or something in one hand. Just like yeah, no. I, and now I want, I want to become an artist so I can I know, right? draw this, and um, like have a have a hop on like a floaty, and uh, drinking a beer, right? So, so uh, this hop will have some of that Pinot Grigio raspberry. I do get raspberry and red currant 
Um, though a rock melon or a light tropical fruit, I do get tropical fruit in this hop quite heavily. So the smell and slightly the taste, there is a, a me, difference sorry. there, but um, reminds me of the dogfish head. What is it called? Oh my God. The one in the big, like the bigger bottle. It's like a, oh, a wine kind of like a white wine thing. Um, um, noble rot. Yes. The smell uh, definitely oh, reminds yeah. me of noble rot, but only a slight, cause it's got that little bit of sweetness because there's like a, a, a deeper fruit involved. But, um, on the smell, it definitely reminds me of noble rot. Yeah. yeah. Um, and noble rot is going back to that Pinot Grigio. I mean, that's, that's the kind of flavor that this one's trying to show off. What's the SNL sketch where they keep talking about Pinot Grigios? I don't know. I'm making a note to look that up, though. Yeah, like I want to say it was like either the the the, uh, the weird swinger family, or maybe it was the ladies' man. Someone said Pinot Grigio at some point during one of those, and it's it's stuck in my head. I, I would think probably wasn't ladies' man because probably not. Uh, but, his thing was Cavassier. Oh yeah, um, from around 2012. Joseph Gordon Levitt. I don't know. Like I'm just saying. Like I have this. This image in my head, like this, this mention of Pinot Grigio, overly uh, an <laughs> SNL sketch. All right, I just pulled it up. I'll link it up in chat. Um, <laughs> well, can't give me quick, things to read in chat. Time is starting so, to yeah. by us. So while we finish these up, what's that? Uh, time slipping past. While we finish these up, oh yeah, real quick, something we wanted to add into this because mainly I've been looking for a show to add in new beer announcements. Because there's a lot of things that suddenly I see it on the shelf and I'm like, why did I not know this was coming? <laughs> but a lot oh, of things yeah. we kind of want to keep our eyes out for. Uh, Goose Island has actually, uh, there wasn't an official announcement. It was at a trade show or something. They just kind of let slip, oh yeah, we've got this other project we're working on uh, that they're calling the Cooper Project. Uh, following the success of its Bourbon County brand Barrel Age Stout Series, Goose Island Brewing has announced a new series to launch next month. The Cooper Project. The new project will be the first barrel age series outside of Bourbon County Stout, which was first introduced in '92. The Cooper Project. Do they do they age their do they take their bourbon barrels, break them apart, put them into other bourbon barrels, and let them age in that first? And <laughs> Yo, then dog. We heard you like barrel age. Casey, did you see that? Which one? Put it on the show Twitter account. I think. Yeah, it's yeah. on the show Twitter account at the thing we were at this weekend they we, did we think they were it was just no. a little misworded is all the way they worded it because they took their june which is a gin barrel aged cold yes i did see that put it into uh, bourbon it, barrels but the way they worded it was like they put the bourbon barrels in the gin barrels because <laughs> it was like and barrel so, a bourbon barrel aged gin barrels and we're like yeah. wait what yo dog we're yeah. into, like barrel aged beers so we barrel aged your barrels yeah. But, uh, the Cooper Project is a rotating series of barrel-aged recipes that will be released throughout 2017. There will be three Cooper Project releases in total this year, uh, with the first a barrel-aged Scottish ale, or Scotch ale, my bad. That is a completely different style, Scotch ale. They, that is it. They, 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 are, they are different. Uh, yes. Uh, scheduled to be released March 6th, so that is coming quick. Uh, weighing in at a hearty 8.7% ABV, the Cooper Project Scotch Ale is described by Goose Island as a deep copper in color, imparting flavors of rich malt, toffee, and subtle roast, allowing for a balanced blend oh, excuse me, of flavors from the beer and from the bourbon barrel. You get all shoved up. A little verklempt over there. Mm. You're ready to go. <laughs> a little, little verklempt. Uh, yeah, um... They go into more. Uh, does anybody else? So sorry to break, but uh, this just hit me on this beer. Does anybody else think this tastes sweeter than the other beers? Yeah, yeah. also, Definitely. yeah, it's and, got a bit of it's got a bit of sweetness, but but it's not. Now you could sweet. use the same ingredients, but the way you brew it make it taste sweeter. But I wonder if it's just the hop that makes you think that it's sweeter than what it is. Yeah, it, it's but it's not un, like I don't like a lot of the sweeter drinks, so it, it's not. I don't know, off putting in the sweetness it's just like yeah. it's a little bit of sweetness enough to be like oh okay this is nice look at it almost i mean to me i don't know about anybody else but to me it almost tastes like a little bit of background artificial sweetener added 
Um, it probably, I mean, it isn't. I'm sure it isn't. Um, yeah. But that's the way it kind of comes across is that just light sweetness. I, I think it, it, uh, I guess it's got to be the hop. It has to be, yeah. Okay, uh, they're going to be three or two more releases. There'll be three releases in that series of beers coming up, but that is the first one coming. And you might want to look around because I don't know if it's going to be like a... It's on doesn't even make it to shelves if the you know stores are gonna have a limit and be like oh two bottles of this per person and there's a line out the door, but start inquiring now at your local shops about that the Cooper project. I'm, and I'm, the I other one coming a, up uh, is Doom. I want to work in a beer. I want to work in a beer store, liquor store, and there's like uh, like hey do you have this? Oh yeah sure. Would you like to know more? <laughs> just go Starship Troopers on. Uh, but. Founders uh, started a new barrel aged program this year with their massive expansion of a barrel aging warehouse. And they, I guess, got rid of the backstage series, which is kind of where they put these beers in the past. And uh, because they put KVS and Backwoods Bastard into this. So there were going to be four beers in this total this year. And they grandfathered in two. And Fruitwood was the first new one. And this one isn't even really a new one. It's an old one that used to be taproom only, but it's Doom. And. Uh, <coughs> Doom is a 10% ABV Imperial IPA that has been aged in bourbon barrels. And it was Jeez. first draft only uh, in 2009 out of their tap room in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So that one will be creeping up on us quick, I don't think. It just says May. And it'll be available in 12-ounce bottles and in bombers, which I, is interesting for all those beers. I think you're supposed to say, Doom! Doom! <laughs> <laughs> Hit. I'm glad you did that. It gave me time to chug down that last beer. <laughs> it's what I do. I stall for time. All right. Uh, I guess the last one we're going to crack here is Eureka. And just so uh, so anybody's aware, that. if they can still find this pack, um, the bottles give a lot of information about what you're actually going to be drinking in each one. So, like, the, the, the hop and the malt, like, everything that you need to know about it pretty much is, is on the, the label for the bottle. So, it's, it's pretty yeah, helpful. Yeah, it's great. Not a lot of breweries are doing anything like that. I, I get it's because the, it's the smash, you know. Yeah, it's kind, the, kind of, of the whole point of the pack, pack, yeah. And they even give a little map and show you where the hops are from. It's great. Uh, the hop origin and all this stuff. The only other uh, label I know that does anything like this that I've seen is Off Color, where they give you like the full malt builds and everything. Bizarrely, this one is like looks so much so much clearer. Yeah, so I, I got the same. I got the same, but I don't know why. But I think that it all, from some reason, in this one here, all of the sediment goes to the bottom so uh, there's more sediment in the bottom but it's not it didn't get stirred up in the, the actual beer See, to me that explains, just I also explains got, why i have these weird slowly forming contrails of sediment trying to get to the bottom yes and that's that's what i'm seeing when i look through that uh through the beer into a light is these sediment pieces and i don't know why i don't know if it was a hop i don't know if the way it was this one was brewed what it, it was, but it uh, looks it looks like one of those jellyfish exhibits where they they, they bottom light jellyfish, mm -hmm. you know, yep. an aquarium. That's that's what it's looking like right now. It's yeah. still pretty hazy to me. Um, <laughs> same color as the other ones, though. So this is the piney hop. It's the Eureka hop. Um, it is from the USA. Does this does this hop when they found it? Did they run naked out under the streets out of the shower? <laughs> Eureka! Oh, okay. I see. I see. I see. <laughs> no, Eureka actually just makes me think of the show. I was going toward the, like the USA chant. I was I was like was queuing you up for a USA what, chant. You said it I, in your I don't know. I don't know how you're getting to a USA chant from there. Well, no, because I said the origin was from the USA. Oh. No, right. we were focused on the name. I was with you, Bob. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Gotcha. All right, me, me and Brittany um, watched a lot of Eureka, so. Yeah. Oh, I did not watch that show, yeah. It has nothing to do um, with the story I told, but. <laughs> this is how our, mind, our minds go. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Daisy, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So high alpha hops, 17 to 20% alpha acid, um, very much used in Imperial IPAs, um, IPAs, American L's, American Reds, Saison's. It's a very American-y, piney, West Coast, Northwest hop. Um, you're going to get a lot of dank. And whenever people say dank, this is what... Well, hold on. Let me smell it first before I, I make that claim real quick. It is dank. I was going to say that before. Yeah. This is, this is dank. Yeah. Um, it's dank. not got as much of that marijuana dankness as you would... Um, you would assume marijuana s smells like, although I wouldn't, you know, wouldn't know anything about that. I've smelled far um, danker beers. It's got that beers. dank, dank aroma. Um, black currant again coming up in this one. Mm, yeah. Dark fruit. Yeah. yeah a strong bit. herbal. Um, pine tree mint. Light grapefruit rind. So just the rind of a grapefruit, which has that more dankness. Um, citrusy tangerine. The See, I saw piney in the description, and my brain was prepared for like sati and flavor, mm. <laughs> which is sure. like well, yeah, yeah, which is like yeah. gin, which is like licking pine cones. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a different description. I yeah. see. Okay, I don't get a lot of dankness from it. Maybe like the smallest hint, but I get definitely the pine scent. Like this is purely just on the scent, pine yeah. and um, a little bit of citrus. A little bit of the current, and now that it's now that I see the mint thing, I kind of get that on a, on a on a far off note on that, which is odd. <laughs> moist, yeah, yeah, I'd say it's moist. It's very moist it on the palate. It being a liquid, I'm gonna say it's moist. <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, so let me while we've got the, I mean, we can go over a little. We've already gone over, so I mean, that's not a big we deal. Really but. All hops can kind of be broken into major flavor categories. And those being what we see today have been the floral, the fruity, the pine, and the spicy. But you can also get like an earthy grassiness or a resinous or a citrusy. And so all of those flavors are what really make up various hop blends um, now of, of flavors. So a single hop can have a blend of multiple flavors. Some will overpower others. And so you'll get some hops that are more piney or some hops that are more floral or citrusy or fruity or what that's what we're getting today so citra of course is a citrus hop um so i always thought citrus citra was a uh i don't know sorry i, I was hoping i'm gonna come to a joke by the end of that <laughs> <laughs> so i'm gonna uh i'm gonna link up a a little link in the chat but so i think Brittany, you may want to put this on the side i don't know if you want to or not um but there's a hop wheel that kind of shows you where various major hop varieties will fall in these different flavors. Uh, no, no. I have to only take my, my dietary things in pyramids. Reorganize this. No wheels, only pyramids. <laughs> yeah, make sure, just send me those links or something. I'll put them in the, this doc. But um, I'll, I'll yeah, make sure all, I get them on the show It should notes. all be in the show notes. Hopefully, yeah. Oh, I, I noticed that... Um, so just this disclaimer, this has nothing to do with this. Uh Sergeant Muffin had pointed out earlier that there's a bit of an audio versus video lag. Um, if the, if it gets posted that way, I do apologize now, but we're hoping by the next time the video thing rolls around, this will all be worked out. Uh, and we'll actually be running this off of a computer. Like an actual PC yeah. that's wired mentioned... instead of wireless. Like we just, we're kind of having to, uh, it's, it's about finances, kids. And... I mentioned in I mentioned in chat to Sergeant Muffin. He's like, yeah, we're, he's like, is your computer overloaded? I was like, well, we're running this off multiple tablets Bailing wire, duct spit, tape. and duct tape. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it feels like. Um, it's still not as bad as the New Year's Eve stream, and yet we didn't have as many problems then. Uh, who knew? But or we were so drunk we didn't notice. That was probably the case. True. We were so drunk because we'd already recorded another episode of like gigantic stouts. We are just like, no, it's great! <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I just well, we also went through most of that mute. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, I, I like this beer. Yeah, this one's pretty good. Uh, the first one, one was... One circle there. Yeah, um, so finishing these out, do we want to run through and say what our favorite was, everybody? You pattern? can't ask me to choose between my children, Chris. I'm, I'm <laughs> going to ask it. Uh, I'll kick us off because my favorite was the first one we did, the Holler Tau Blanc. Mm. That was it's pretty good. just amazing to me. Um, it, that felt really great on my I, palate. I, re I really did like it. That's that's probably the one I would I would lean to the most. My uh, second place is somewhere between 
Enigma and Eureka, I think. I don't know which one of them. Like they're 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 good for different things. Yeah, uh, it depends on what you're in the mood for. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say, it's my my top one is between the Eureka and the Blanc. I just really liked those floral hops. That might have been part of it too, because it had this this range of flavor. Yeah, it and I like this one. It sounds odd to be like, oh, I like the pine, because you're just drinking that all the time. But you know, but it's. I don't know what it is. And to me, it's not really that dank at all. Uh, I mean, we've smelled beers that are basically pot in a glass. Well, so <laughs> again, this so comes down an Acronox, to- I, I am going to come up with a Brambling Cross Love because I did think that that was probably the best one out of all these. It had that really big spiciness to it. Uh, you know, when we talk about spice, I did like that. I usually Look, like again, spice too. Th- this is like a kind of a game of inches because I actually enjoyed all of these. It's a really, large. yeah, okay. So that being said, I think we could probably all agree that if you can find this pack somewhere, maybe just get the pack. <laughs> yeah, it is yeah. old. Yeah. So that's the thing to keep in mind. This was six months past. We didn't realize that when we grabbed it. Yeah. But the idea of what's going on with this pack was really too good to pass up because it was kind of in a pinch. We couldn't. We were going to do Sierra Nevada's uh, IPA pack instead. Couldn't find it. It wasn't. We couldn't find it on shelves yet. They had it listed on their website. So we're like, oh, we'll just grab and do that. And then we're at the store and it was not there. But this was, and we're like, holy crap, that is great. Yeah. So that'll be coming. My, yeah. my, my thoughts on the Schlafly plaque, if you, is, I always fall back on Ferris Bueller. It is so choice. If you have the means. <laughs> if you can find it, yeah. and that's the key. So Schlafly is a, a small distribution area, and then inside that small distribution area, you still have to find like a six-month-old pack of beers that, that's been on the shelf for a while, so... If you can track it down, please grab it because even though it's six months old, they the hops still stand out. You can mm-hmm. still tell the difference, and it's a good um, get together with your friends. Don't try to drink the twelve pack by yourself and try to go through all these by yourself. Get get together with your friends and do one of these little tastings at home, and it's amazing. Oh, yeah, by the I, way, I would recommend what? splitting it with people. Um, Nakronos points out that he bought it. I think about about the same time we did because he was there when we bought ours. Yeah, um, <laughs> but he said, yeah. you know it. You don't it, the 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 age isn't to the point that it's it's ruining this whole thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, um, all the hops. This goes out. back. To, I, I don't. I don't know if this is the right right time to bring this up because it's probably another show topic, completely. But it goes back to what I, I kind of said at the top of the show yesterday. I had a beer from the West Coast that was four months old, a hoppy double IPA. Right. That was not made with caramel malts. These were single malt, single hops. So there were no caramel malts in them. And they held up really well long term. So I think that the fact that they don't have caramel malts actually is a good thing uh, for long term storage. Uh, th- th- that that keys me on to do caramel malts actually age a beer quicker. Yeah, uh, I kind of want to get into that and look into that a little bit now. Let's do an experiment. Let's just start drinking all the beer we can and... <laughs> Well, no, see what that tells us. We do want to have an experiment episode. Casey brought this up a while back, and I want to do it on the video. Ooh, format, yeah. Where we take uh, a beer, all of us can, and we age it for a shorter, like three or four of them, and age them in different environments over a short uh-huh. period of time, and then taste the difference over that short period of time, the effect that has on the beer. I mean, if we're going to be truly scientific, we need to break it down by the different beers, how they hold up depending on you know, storage containers. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, yeah, and that's, you that's can find a it by can, or if you can find it by, uh, by dark bottle or try one with like a green bottle or a clear bottle and see yeah. what, uh, what, yeah. what happens to this. An acronym, you can kind of help us out a little bit here. I know that, um, Oh, what's the, the one that you can no longer drink Chris, because it comes in a mini keg. Newcastle. Oh, Newcastle. Yeah. So Newcastle comes in mini keg. It comes in clear glass bottles, or at least it used to. It may have switched over to they may have switched over to dark bottles, but um, it comes in now dark bottles, and then they come in keg as well. I mean, and can as well. So if we could get multiple versions of that, uh, maybe we can have Chris throw up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. Get me going. Uh, I think we're just about out of time, so we'll continue this discussion actually into post-show stuff. 
But before we start to close this one out, uh, I guess we're going to go and announce what our next pack will be in two weeks. And we are going to be yeah. doing the new Belgium Folly Pack, the newest one they have out. For spring 2017. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, this I have forgotten. Everyone can find because they've announced uh, national distribution in all 50 states that in, in the next <laughs> yeah. two weeks should be there. You should be able to find this wherever you are in the country. What were you saying, Bob? Yeah, and act, uh, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll talk a little bit more here in, in the after party, but um, that that folly pack for the spring has the cherry almond ale, the fat tire, the citradelic, and the voodoo ranger IPA in it. Yeah, that will be for cool. in two right. weeks. So, so. Uh, anything else to announce before we officially close this out? Um, I don't think we have any announcements no. or anything. Yeah. All right, so let's. I don't think we got anything. I don't think we have anything planned in the short term. <laughs> All right, Casey. All right. So moving on from here, subscribing to get some great resources, you can go to haveadrinkshow.com. Remember, haveadrinkshow.com. Now follow us at Have a Drink Show on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and please rate the show on iTunes to help spread the word. Please. Uh, if I can ask one thing that you do, uh, we don't ask for money. We don't ask for anything else. Just go on iTunes and rate us. It takes maybe five minutes, even if you have to sign up for an iTunes account. But um, have we given away the swag bag yet? No, we're not. Uh, no, them. We're that's, 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 them. that's what I was going to try to, to say is we're still doing the thing of you can do a rating with your uh, least favorite beer with the description of your favorite beer as your iTunes yeah. review. Yeah, absolutely. There's two that's up there for uh, to kind of give a, um, a show of how you're supposed to do it. And uh, Whenever you go on there, make that rating. What happens is whenever iTunes sees that you're getting ratings, they actually bump you up further in the uh, the the ratings or actually further in the search. So whenever somebody searches for have a drink right now, we don't pop up first. Whenever you look at have a drink show, then we pop up. So go ahead and run online and, and go to iTunes and put that in. Yeah, we want it to be so you type H-A yeah. and then have a drink comes up. So we need that many <laughs> reviews. I yeah. know we've got it's, a couple on there that are great examples to lead you. Right now, they're the two moving in to win. I got to say, uh, we're going to close these out at the end of February. If you, you don't can't let these people in. win. You've got much better reviews than you. I know it. I can feel it. <laughs> yeah. Go look at those. See if you can top them up. And, and let me go ahead and say thank you for the individuals that have gone on there, the three or four that have already been on there to uh, rate the show. Thank you so much. We appreciate it so yes. much. Yes, yeah. Very no, much I, I, I'm kidding when I say that you know I, I i love the fact that you guys have to have, you know jumped into this <laughs> yeah um when we hit the end of the month we'll actually read all those out i guess it'll be the beginning of next month technically we'll read through all those descriptions but they're great and we're loving them so keep them coming guys all right and uh don't forget you can tell us your favorite drink ask a question or live leave some general feedback uh, just use the email address uh, feedback at have a drink show.com you can also use the feedback page on the website Yep, Feed. and all joking and fun aside, guys, I'd like to remind everyone to please drink responsibly. Don't drink and drive. Everyone knows their limits. Uh, I would say Uber. Do not, do not be listening point. to this episode, uh, listening to one of our episodes, trying to drink along with us and drive. No, do not do that. That is that is bad. If you're commuting and trying to drink along with us, that, that no, we do not. We're not condone that. Go home. Go home. You're probably drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Go drunk here. <laughs> Yes. Uh, or drink, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we do want to remind everyone about the um, we do our, our normal show is audio only, and it's uh, also every two weeks. So it's going to be the off week from the video show. So, but for I the mean, video show, it, it, huh? We're slowly catching up to where it's going to be like they're both just normal shows. Well, yeah. yeah. It's it's hard to think of it like that right now for some reason. Um, well, it's, we just we're weekly. Us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you'll get to see, you'll just basically hear from us all month long in some form or another, <laughs> but, uh, for the next video episode, be sure to check us out in another couple of weeks. Uh, once again, I'm Brittany Lee Walker. I'm Justin Frazier. I'm Christopher Walker. And I'm Ron. Damn it, Bob. I'm Casey <laughs> Price. See you next time. All right. See I'm going to play the, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah,
belt, baby. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> no, I've never heard the outro. I can never listen to our own podcast. At this point. My own <laughs> voice is so grating to me that I can't, like, I'll listen to, like, five minutes to make sure the audio, audio quality was where it should have been. And then I'm like, nope, peace out. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>